Watching many a YouTuber play through early builds of upcoming physics-based demolition sim Instruments of Destruction calls back childhood memories of sifting through boxes filled with random Lego pieces and shunning instructions to build castles, bridges, and skyscrapers of my own imagination. Before gleefully smashing them into smithereens, a plastic brick blast radius stretching across my bedroom floor. I recognize this same childlike desire for playful chaos at the heart of Vehicles of Destruction. As simply put, the game requires you to create your own demolition vehicles, starting with a cabin and wheelbase before attaching a wealth of spare parts, connectors, and weapons with which to wreck stuff. Each element of the game's 10 explorable islands is ripe for destruction too, from its steel frame towers to ancient stone ruins, and to me, making rubble of concrete in a vehicle of your own construction seems just as fun as the act of demolition itself. There are developer-made showcase vehicles included if you'd rather dive right in. But I prefer creating without instructions. There are no rules. That's not to say you can just slap 20 wrecking balls onto a crane. I mean, you can, but whilst amusing, I imagine it'd be a nightmare to maneuver. For the advanced physics engine in Instruments of Destruction applies to the vehicles as well as destruction. So, for instance, if you're wanting to load the rear of your vehicle with a piston-driven catapult, to fling instead of swing your wrecking ball, then you're going to have to consider adding opposite end counterweight. That is, stick a heavy component onto the front of your vehicle, else stretching back your catapult's bungee ropes will tilt the front end up like a clumsy wheelie. Admittedly, from the footage I've seen, it looks as though there's a fair bit of trial and error required to create your own demolition vehicles that'll actually be effective in, you know, demolishing stuff. So, as I say, there's the game's pre-made showcase vehicles to start you off with more unlockable upon completion of the game's objectives. And what are these objectives? Well, each island features normal, challenge, and expert objectives, whereby you'll have strict time limits to destroy everything in sight or be required to travel from spawn point A to a specific target at point B, whilst taking care to preserve stone ruins. See, there's an element of strategy at play, with your vehicle, either selected or created, needing to offer the optimum tools to complete the objectives. It'll play out as a 3D puzzle at times. One that I imagine without foreplanning will see you calamitously ripping the underside of a bridge that you need to cross later. But even though the game is looking to avoid an over-reliance on the thrill of destruction, with these strategic elements, the act of accidentally smashing into the bridge will be as satisfying as deliberately taking down the tower. And that is down to Instrument of Destruction's excellent advanced physics engine. In short, Knocking down buildings is a primeval blast. It looks fantastic. The game's wonderfully tactile concrete blows, steel frame structures, glass and brick tear down into heavy dust clouds. The resulting blast of concrete breadcrumbs and glass icicles are all so immensely satisfying to watch. You might choose to shoot a rocket towards a tower's base to watch it topple on top of itself or rotate a giant circular saw into its midriff sending shards of brickwork flinging across the island. It all looks supremely fantastic, and the fact that the game doesn't appear to drop frame rate in the slightest is a testament to how well implemented the game's physics engine really is. Graphics, too, are on point, with the only compromise I can see in the game's early access version being the triangle mesh visible on the water surface. This, of course, looks like it could pass as intended stylistic choice too. But either way, if it means the game's core destruction mechanics proceed unhindered, then it's a worthwhile compromise to make. As an aside, should your vehicle fall into said water, then the game's water physics looks spot on too, with accurate rippling effects reacting to the weight of your vehicle. In fact, the entirety of the game's environment reacts wonderfully to the game's primordial chaos. Grasslands are flattened combined harvester style by your demolition vehicle's wheel tracks, and trees are scythed by your hulking chainsaw as if made of butter. Like I said at the very outset, everything in the game's world is destroyable. With Instrument of Destruction's advanced GPU-driven particle and destruction systems, each element perfectly interacts to create a visceral experience. Instruments of Destruction comes from solo developer Radiant Games, the moniker of industry veteran Luke Schneider famed for a ton of much-loved indie games and bite-sized arcade experiences. Schneider also served as lead tech designer and lead multiplayer designer at developer Deep Silver Volition and worked on 2009's Red Faction, Guerrilla, 
a game with colossal destruction at the core of its third-person shooting action. Just released via Radiant Games and frantic twin-stick shooter, Devastar. Itself seamlessly melding face-melting bullet hell shooting with hypnotic neon pixie dust explosion and debris. Clearly, Schneider has an aptitude for dazzling destruction. And it's a thread reaching for its zenith on instruments of destruction. In my mind, top-tier destructive believability in video games in recent years has taken a backseat in favor of souped-up graphics. Those of us old enough to remember Blast Corps will no doubt have our interest piqued by instruments of destruction. But there are a handful of modern titles out there already satiating my desire for wanton destruction. Teardown incorporates environmental demolition as means to completing its exciting heist. In the AAA sphere Remedy Entertainment's control has you ripping concrete clean out of the ground to fling at your enemies. As an aside, I would love to see more opportunity for destruction in Control's sequel. But Remedy, I hope, would fix some of the frame rate drops I experienced in a particular dense firefight. More malleable environments shouldn't come at a cost of smooth gameplay, in my opinion. Compromises have to be made in a game's development to keep the frame rates in check, of course. But in taking a physics first approach whilst maintaining frame rates, in a game as good looking as Instruments of Destruction, Radiant Games Luke Schneider is proving it can be done, albeit on an at present small scale. The game is currently in early access on Steam, with the developer stating feedback from the community will directly influence future gameplay modes. There's no more than five or six hours of content at present, but in addition to the aforementioned objective-focused gameplay, there is a sandbox mode. Here is where my childlike creative desires are released. Free from the constraints of objective and budget, I'm back to crafting LEGO towers on a whim without boundaries imposed by instruction manuals. There's a ton of potential for replayability, with completed objects unlocking more vehicle parts and demolition weapons. The only limit to your instruments of destruction will be your imagination. Did you know that we at Gaming Vault upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.